Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse number 35. And it reads this way. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and, the, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? You may be seated. Just for a little while on this morning, I would like to talk to you from this thought of surviving the storm. To give you a little bit of background of what's going on in this text, I have to let you know where they are when it says they set out across the sea. In the time of this text, they are on the Sea of Galilee. And this particular sea is set inside of a valley where it is 680 feet below sea level. It's surrounded by high mountains that reach up to about 2,000 feet. That high hills bring about a situation where there's cool air that drinks, comes down into that valley area. But the problem is, is that the area around the actual sea itself is warm and moist. And if anybody has done any time of being able to watch the weather and knows what happens when you mix cool air and warm air. There becomes this big old storm that comes about on the middle of the sea. Now, in any other circumstances, that wouldn't be a problem, but the problem with this sea is, is that it's not very deep. So what that problem brings about is, is that any time a storm erupts on the Sea of Galilee, it is much more violent than it would be in any other body of water because the water is not able to absorb the strength of that storm like a larger body or deeper body of water would be able to do. When I begin to think about this, that reminds me so much of our lives. We have the heaven that sits high above us that has that cool, refreshing air and God speaking unto us, and then we get down here on earth where we have that warm, tropical air in our lives called the world that brings about different consequences and circumstances, different issues that we have to deal with. And at any given moment, a quick storm may erupt in our lives. And what really made this thing bring it home to me is that whenever we think about it, it seems like that the biggest storms that come in our lives seem to come when we're at our lowest points. Seems like just as soon as you get to that place, when you realize that you've begun to see so many different things happening in your life, you see so many things happening in the news, you're just at a place to where you're just like, okay, maybe I can maintain. Just out of nowhere, a storm erupts in your life and begins to wreak havoc in every area of your life. And you're just sitting there trying to understand what happened to me. When we look at this text, we see that Jesus has said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. He had just finished teaching to different ones and had given different parables and to them the parable of the sower and has also explained to the disciples what the parables really mean, helping them to understand that a parable is simply a heavenly understanding of what's, an earthly understanding of what's going on in the heavens. He continue, he's lets them know that it's time for us to go to the other side. And in the midst of going to the other side, this rapid storm breaks out in the middle of the sea, causing them to feel like they have lost all hope. 
feeling like they're going to perish because all they know is, is that there's this big storm, there's water in the boat, and that's all we need to know that it's, we are about to perish. Many times, just like the disciples, whenever we feel like everything is going wrong, all we know is, is that God, I'm under attack. All I can see is those winds and the waves of the trials and tribulations of my life. And I don't know what's going to happen, but all I need you to know is I need your help. We see here, they, they come to that understanding that maybe if we talk to Jesus, everything will be okay. They know that he's already healed the sick and raised someone from the dead. So they know the power that he has, but yet in the midst of the storm, all they know is there is trouble. How many times have you gone through life and something happens to you and you feel like you know who Jesus is, you know that he walks with you, you know that he talks with you, but in the midst of the storm, all you see is what's going on in front of you, behind you, beside you, and even in your lap. This morning, all I want to do is just take a little time and just remind you that as Christians, we will all face storms at some point in time in our lives. But we must, re we must remember, with God's help, we are able to overcome all of our storms. Let me say that again. As Christians, we will all face storms at some point in time in our lives. But the thing is, you have to remember that in the midst of every storm, that God is able to keep you and help you to overcome. When I was looking at this text, there was a few things that kind of popped out to me. And if you'll just stick with me for just a few moments, we'll go through this and then I'll let you be on your merry way. The first thing that I noticed in this text is that storms come even when you're being obedient. In the text in verse number 35, it says on the same day in the evening. He said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, in this text, I don't see where it says that the disciples decide to get up and go and just leave Jesus. It doesn't say that they decide to go out on their own to go on a fishing trip. It doesn't even say that they got mad and just walked away from Jesus. It says that he said to them, and when I look at it in my Bible, it's in red, so that lets me know that Jesus said it. He said, let us go to the other side and cross over. What that lets me know is this, is that even though sometimes storms erupt in our lives, they may come at a point when we're simply just being obedient. Many times we feel like whenever things go wrong in our lives, it's because we've done something wrong. But in this case, that's not the case at all. The disciples were simply doing as they were instructed to go to the other side of the sea to continue on the ministerial journey of Jesus. But in the very midst of them crossing over to the sea, there came this big storm. I don't know about you, but it seems like more often than not, whenever you get through being obedient, that's when that time storm seemed to hit the most out of nowhere. Seems like whenever you're trying to do what God has told you to do and walk down the path that he's given you to walk down and living in the ministry that he's given you to do, that's when storms seem to arrive and just run roughshod in your life. But we see here that this, this is not the case. We, we understand and know that although they were doing what they were told, they still had to deal with the consequences of the storm they were going through. The text tells us that the winds were knocking them to and fro. The water was beginning to fill up the boat. But in the midst of this, they're still doing what God had told them to do. And so what that tells me is that even though we may not understand what's going on and why it's happening because we're doing what God has told us to do, if we just hold on, help is on the way. And so, we begin to continue seeing this, and that what's important about this is, is that although the storm arose, there was something else that happened along the way. Because of them going through the storm, 
they were able to see the power of God or power of Jesus in the midst of their storm. They are in the midst of this storm, but then what happens? They wake up Jesus saying, Master, do you not care? And so many times we are just like everybody else. When we get in the midst of our storms, it seems like when God is silent the most, we feel like he's not caring. He doesn't want to know what we're doing. He doesn't understand. It's something, but all we know is we're feeling on the inside, don't you care what I'm going through? Look at your neighbor and say, he does care. And so once he wakes up, Jesus simply stands up and calms the winds and the waves and says, peace, be still. And how many of you know that whenever you go through the storms in your life, the same thing will happen, but you have to go seek Jesus to get that answer. Their peace did not come until they actually went and saw Jesus and said, hey, we've got a problem. And that's so many times where we run into a problem is that whenever we don't go, when we go through the storms and trials of life, we forget that we have to go see Jesus in order to get that peace that we so desperately need. But at the same time, once the storm is calm, what happens? We forget about it and we get to our next storm in our lives. And we get in that same little uproar and that same disparity that we had the last time. Forgetting that Jesus has made a way for us once before. But the thing about it is just like the disciples, they had seen him heal people. They had seen him raise someone from the dead. But yet in the midst of this storm, they're still saying, do you not care? They were still fearful. They were still afraid because all they knew was what was going on in front of them at that very moment. This text lets me know that even though we may not understand, the trials and tribulations have a meaning behind them. Whenever we look at this, we see how he calms the storm and says, peace, be still. But how would they know that he could calm the wind and the waves lest they had gone through the storm? And so many times we're the same way. We wouldn't know who God is for ourselves if we had not been through some trials and some tribulations in our own lives. Somebody can be a witness that he's a way maker. Somebody can say that he's a healer. Somebody else say he's the bread when I'm hungry. But you wouldn't have known that he was all of those things unto you had you not had to go some time without a little bit of food. Or you had to go some time without being able to take care of your bills and in some kind of way it seemed like even though you had more bills than money he made a way but it didn't come until you had to go through that storm in your life so that lets me know that even though I'm being obedient and even though I'm going through it doesn't have to say that there's no troubles in my life a good way to look at this is when you look at Moses and the children of Israel God told Moses to deliver them from Pharaoh and take them out of Egypt. And he went with them by day and went with them by night. And it seems like when they got to a point, they came to the Red Sea. And when they got to the Red Sea, they were in trouble because Pharaoh was right behind them. Although Moses was doing what God had told them to do, he saw the problem because the people of Israel helped him to understand the problem. They were complaining, saying, had you left us in Egypt, we wouldn't have had to die this way. But if you go on inside the story, it shows us that even though they did not get taken, they were in the situation that they were, where Pharaoh was behind them and the Red Sea was in front of them, God made a way out of no way. So that lets us know that in spite of what we're going through, as Christians, you must remember that even though you are facing storms in your life, God is still there being able to take care of you and get you through to the other side. And we'll just simply use that as a tool to show you his power. The next thing that I noticed within this text is that when you go through the storm, you're not alone. 
When we go back to verse number 35, it says that Jesus said to them, let us go to the other side. Which lets me know that the disciples weren't traveling alone on their journey to the other side of the sea. But they were in the boat with Jesus. And then also in the text, it also shows us where it says other little boats were with them. Many times when we go through our lives and we deal with the trials and tribulations and our problems, we seem to run into a case where we feel like we're the only ones going through what we are going through. And it seems like that in the midst of everything going on, that there's no one there to really help us and no one there to really understand the problems that we're facing. But my Bible tells me that Jesus said he will never leave us nor forsake us. So that lets me know that in the midst of what I'm going through, that Jesus is still there. Even within this text, it says that Jesus was on the boat, laying on the pillow on the stern of the ship. So while they're going through this and going through the ship being rocked and torn and the water going into the boat, they were simply afraid because all they saw what was going on, all the while forgetting that Jesus was right there with them on that very boat. But they felt like many of us do is that because he wasn't getting up and because he wasn't doing what we felt like we, he should be doing, that he didn't care. But he's still yet laying on this pillow knowing that he can feel this boat moving from side to side. And you can't tell me that he didn't feel that water hitting his face. But the disciples just had that fear on the inside. But once they came to the realization that I have got to talk to Jesus for myself and get him to understand I'm in trouble, that's when that peace came about. And so this morning, I encourage you, don't forget that Jesus is riding along with you. Even though it seems like that there's a problem in your life, even though it seems like all hope is gone, there, all you have to do is just take a moment and just steal away. And allow God to speak to you and speak to whatever you're going through because he knows and he cares about you. But the text also says that there were other little boats going along with them. So that lets me know that not only did they have Jesus with them, but they had some other people going through the same storm that they were going through. And just like many of us, when we go through, we feel like it's just us going through. But if you take a little time to watch some people a little while longer, you'll find out that they've got stuff going on in their lives just like you have stuff going on. But this text also shows me something else. that They say that there, the other boats that were with them were smaller boats. So that the storm that was affecting them in one way affected the smaller boats in a totally different way because those boats had to deal with even rougher waters because they were smaller boats and couldn't take on the very water that was taking them out. So that lets me know that sometimes the thing that you're going through, somebody else is going through it with you, but it may be affecting them much worse than what it's affecting you. That's why it's so important that we pray for each other. That's why it's so important that we seek God in the midst of our problems. Because we see in the text that once they sought God for what was going on in their boat, Jesus calmed the sea and the storm, which not only helped them in their boat, but it also helped those that were in the smaller boats as well. When looking at this text, I thought about last year when my wife and I were on a trip to Memphis. It was in early March after we had had all those ice storms and had had to deal with the ice and the snow and the interstate between Little Rock and Memphis had begun to develop potholes. And along the way, we see how different cars are pulled over from the side because the, they hit a pothole and it messed up their tire, causing them to have a flat tire or something else that happened into their car. And so they're off to the side of the road. Now, we are on this same interstate traveling with everybody else. But because we knew ahead of time that there were potholes along the way, I had determined that it was best to stay in the left-hand lane. So what I'm trying to tell you is this, is that sometimes if you stay in your lane and don't go in somebody else's lane, even though you're going through the same thing, you can get to where your destination is without any problems or having to pull over on the side of the road and get somebody to come help you too. 
But the thing about it is, is that you're not in it alone. So it's important that as Christians you remember that even though you're going through your storm, you're not in the storm by yourself. You've got God and you've got other people traveling the same journey along with you. And that as long as we depend on God and trust one another to get us through, we'll be able to make it through the storm. The last thing that I noticed in this text is that storms will show you your level of faith. When we look at the text, it says that the disciples came to Jesus and said, Master or teacher, do you not care that we're going to perish? Now, before they got to this point, they had seen Jesus raise someone from the dead. They had seen Jesus heal the sick. They knew Jesus was on the boat, but yet and still, they were still filled with fear and were scared that they were about to die. And so many times, just like the disciples, we know who God is. We know that God is the creator of all things. We know that God has taken care of us up until this point in time in our lives, but it seems like just as soon as something happens in our lives, that fear comes rushing right back in. It's like we get spiritual amnesia and forget what God has done for us before. And so it begins to go into the text that they feel like they're about to perish. And God, and then they say to Jesus, we are going to die. Don't you care? So many times we feel like we, we, that God doesn't care. We feel like he's not caring about us. He's not going to come see about us because it seems like all we see is the storm and we don't see God moving at any point in time in our lives. And the same thing with the disciples. All they saw was Jesus laying on this pillow in the stern of the ship, just laying there calm, cool, and collected, getting some rest while they're having to deal with winds and waves and not being knocked to and fro. And just like them, we seem like whenever we get knocked to and fro, all that God is doing is sitting back and simply watching us, just letting us go through what we're going through, not caring, not feeling one bit of concern towards us. Those are the times that we have to have the most faith because we have to stand on the fact of knowing that if he's done it before, he can do it again. If he can heal the sick and if he can raise the dead, then he can take care of this storm that I'm going through. But it wasn't until they actually called on Jesus that he took care of what they were dealing with. So, what I encourage you is this. Whenever you go through the storms and trials of life, you must remember that God is still there. And not only that, but you have to keep your faith in spite of what you're facing. And trust and believe that even though the things in front of you are going haywire, that God is still there being able to take care of you and will bring you through what you're going through. So when we look at this text, we see how going through the storm is not necessarily because you've been disobedient. Because we see that even this text, that even in obedience, you're going to face a storm. We also see that when we go through the storm that we're not alone. Then finally, it also shows us that when we go through the storm, it's going to show us our level of faith. The text ends in such a way in verse number 41. It ends with this question. It says, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? That question is a real good question. And I have an answer to that question. The the answer to that question is he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the savior of our soul. Somebody asked, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. Mary's baby. God's only son. He's the one that went to a cross on Calvary and died for you, and he died for me. But see, that's not how this story ends. Because the sto- my Bible tells me that on the third day morning, that he got up with all power in his hand. 
Somebody says it just like this. The, though the storms keep on raging in my life. And sometimes it seems to be a little hard to tell the night from the day. Still that hope that lies within that breathes assures that I can lift my eyes upon the hill that lies within. Giving that hope that we know that God is able to get us through the storm. Even though we know that the storm keeps on raging in our lives, our soul is anchored in Jesus. Why can my soul be anchored in Jesus? Because he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. And the joy we care as he tarry there, none other has known. Walk with me. Talk with me. That's all I need him to do. Because I know that just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. If I just hold on to God's unchanging hand, even though times are filled with swift transitions, none other has ever known. If you just keep holding on to God, even in the midst of the storm, he can keep you and guide you. May the Lord bless you real good. May he keep you is my prayer. I'm going to tell you this is just keep holding on to God. Keep trusting God in the midst of your storm. Even though it seems like something is about to happen and you may not understand what's going on, if you just keep holding on, he'll be able to say, peace, be still. When you get that peace, it's like a river that just keeps on flowing. When you get that peace, you'll be able to understand that everything will be all right. Everything that he's told you will come to pass. All you've got to do is just hold on to God's unchanging hand. May the Lord bless you real good.